Good morning from Ken Cox at Glendoic Garden Centre. If you come to Glendoic in the second half of May, you cannot fail to be blown away by the amazing deciduous azaleas that we have. Uh, they come in almost every conceivable colour, with the exception of blues and purples. Deciduous azaleas have several really great attributes, quite apart from the fact that they cover themselves in flare every year. They're late flowering, so if you're in a cold inland garden and you were frustrated by the fact that some of your rhododendrons got frosted a few weeks ago, deciduous azaleas don't usually flower until the end of May and well into June, so they're very hardy and they hardly ever suffer any problems with frost. They're also incredibly wind tolerant, so if you've got a windy garden and you find that, um, that larger leaf rhododendrons get blown around about a bit, these are much better. They lose their leaves in the winter, in the middle of winter, when the worst storms are coming. So they're, they're very, very tolerant of that kind of thing. In fact, they are the toughest of the whole rhododendron collection, really. So if you've got extreme conditions, not ideal situation, deciduous azaleas are fantastic. They grow to about two meters, six feet high. You can cut them back if they get too big. And as you can see here, they come in almost any color. The other great thing about them is the pale ones, many of them are scented the pinks and the yellows and the whites. So here we have uh, Lutium, the wild Pontica rhododendron uh, or azalea uh, with the scented yellow flowers. It's one of the earliest ones to come into flower and uh, it's nearly finished now. And then we have a whole range of pale pinky white ones here. Soir de Paris, a fantastic scent. Uh, this is Irene Costa at the bottom here with this kind of uh, yellow and pink and white mixture. Uh, and this was, is Delicatissima, another similar one here. Bright orange azaleas are mainly derived from these small flowered North American azaleas. This one is called Calendulaceum, comes from North Carolina and the Appalachian Mountains. And breeders over the last 200 years have bred these orange colours into larger and larger flowers. The most famous one is this one here, Gibraltar, which is a kind of pale orange and it covers itself in flower every year from a very small plant onwards. And then we have a newer German near red azalea, Parkfire, which has um, dark red buds as you can see and then when they open first they're red and then they fade out to a kind of deep rich orange. And then We've got some double flowered orange azaleas. This is an American one called Gina May, and the extra petals end up giving you this kind of football almost effect. Um, uh, uh, very attractive. Uh, this one has shades of apricot, peach, orange, and yellow in it. So what conditions do deciduous azaleas need in the garden? Actually, they're quite easy plants to, to, to please. Uh, they lead, need reasonably well-drained, acidic or peaty soil, but most of Scotland has that anyway. So don't plant them in clay soil. If, if you have clay soil, just plant them on the top of that and they should do fine. Um, they do very well in full sun. Doesn't matter if they're in shade some of the day. I wouldn't plant them under trees if you can avoid it because they won't flower quite so well. Uh, the more sun you give them generally, the, the, the better they flower. But if they're in shade some of the day, that's absolutely fine. Generally, very easy plants to, to, to keep to look after and they will flower extremely well for you every year without fail once they're established.